so many artists are doing this. This is inevitable. This is what's happening. They're tired of the machine. They're tired of the unnecessary middleman. I know that I am. I'm tired of working for these companies. There's no excuse for you not be making enough music to sell to your audience on a regular. There's no barriers. In our direct to consumer conversation about how can you make money and make more meaningful revenue from your music. We're gonna talk about Pharrell Williams today because he just like on his birthday, he just quietly drop in an album. Now, Orko is a huge NERD, Pharrell Williams fan. What, what do we got the shirt? Let's see it, let's see it. <laughs> Billionaire <Yeah, laughs> boys club. Half of the closet is dedicated to this brand. <laughs> and absolutely no exaggeration. <laughs> I have like hats, like it's crazy. I'm a fan, you know, Neptunes, Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis and like Teddy Riley are like my, my holy trinity of music producers that I absolutely love. It's really exciting. He just dropped Virginia Black Yacht Rock Volume 1, City of Limitless Access. The thing I'm not quite sure of right off the bat is I don't know know if it's a new project called Virginia because there's this title is super long. He just released this without any warning. It's kind of like if you know, you know that it came out. He released it directly on his website. He hasn't even posted on IG or anything about it. Pusha T posted something about it. Tyler, the creator posted something about it, but it's just been from like blogs or if you were on the email list, this is how you heard of this record. And, and I got to tell you, it is phenomenal. I'm going to get all the quick fanboy stuff out of the way because I want to talk about the whole direct-to-consumer model, but you got to go listen to this. You can go find it right now on blackyachtrock.com. It's his website. It's 10 songs. It makes me want to like sip on a pina colada in, in the breeze. Like it is like old school. The name is perfect. The, the yacht rock via feel of it. It definitely has like an eighties kind of almost like Bob Seagree, almost like a hall of notes, almost, you know, that kind of vibe. It almost feels like an NERD record without Chad and Shay. Of course, we know that Chad and Pharrell are going through a dispute Neptunes with their trademark and stuff. Orko literally came to my office and he's like, I don't even know if this is real. Can this be real? Yeah. I'm Cause like, it was on I'm April like, 1st. Oh, when they did it. Like I was just, you just hate, you hate to see when these just, you know, people have inspired you so much. Like they start duking it out. It's always about something. And we did a quick trademark search and, we're, and it looks like it is. In fact, you know, Pharrell did the thing. He, he put the, you know, the name and in his holding company and, and all this stuff. But anyway, we're not talking about that. The goal of today is to talk about what, what this direct to consumer model is because this might have been something as simple as for all didn't want to go through the whole gambit of like giving the album to a distributor and then you know figuring it out having a marketing plan and a budget and all the stuff he's just like it's my birthday i just want to like release this record who cares but people who are really looking at this and doing it meaningfully to roll it out and get people to pay for the music. It's smart. And we had Curtis King on the channel and he was talking about how he moved, you know, what was it like 150, 175 units of his last record. And he goes, I made four grand. Yep. He goes, for me to make four grand off of streaming, that would have been, you know, like millions of plays. And so he just goes for me, I made the decision when Spotify demonetized, if you didn't have your music, if it didn't have at least a thousand plays on it, you don't get paid those royalties. He goes, when I saw that, he's like, I'm over it. He goes, so I took all my music off of streaming platforms. And that's a pretty big move. That's a pretty yeah. bold thing to do because also you know fans might be upset about that and and he was getting backlash which i never understand when artists get backlash for them how they are running their business i applaud him for for doing that pulling the curtain back and showing us what he's doing to give us inspiration to how we can modify it like as a community we have to be having these conversations as we're looking for a solution i see a lot of things going well you know streaming just needs to pay more Okay, well, wait for that to happen. In the meantime, what are you going to do today to take control of your career? So. Yeah, and it might happen, right? So we have Living Wage for Musicians Act, which is pending, you know, but what they're saying is you'd get paid a penny per stream. So equally, it's just as far as you making legitimate money with even the smallest audience, and we go beyond just the sale of the music in this one yeah. vertical of selling on your website. And it's still smart. And you guys, I've seen questions of like, well, how do you do it? It doesn't have to be complicated. It's, you right. can have a very, very simple site. They pay through PayPal and then you redirect them to a Dropbox link. It sure. could really be that inexpensive for you to do it. You just have to have the, the place for them to go through. And in fact, you don't even need the website. You could use one of these free link trees or whatever to be right. like, it's, there's the link. And then it the redirects link. after you pay. So it can, it can be literally as be free. easy as or as difficult and as advanced as you want. 
Now I'm going to pull up. So the difference is with the Pharrell album, but it still applies to this models because the only difference is Pharrell isn't charging you anything. He's, he's giving it away. So there's no, but just imagine a, a pay aspect to this. Okay. So let me share this. This is what he's doing. This is the website. This is what happens when you go to blackyachtrock.com. You have the album cover here, the 10 tracks. He has each song individually there as an MP3 download that you can download each one individually, or you can download them all. And then he has an option for you to join the mailing list. Now, if I were to do this as a, you know, as an artist right now, I would make it so you had to sign up for an email list at the very least if I was giving away these songs before you downloaded them. It also feels like a real gift this way. Now, obviously, Pharrell Williams is in a, in a position to where he might not need money. He might not. He just might want to give it away. This might be because of the rollout, because it wasn't advertised in any fashion. He might be doing this because he's just given the real fans a taste of it. And then he might release it on streaming later. I don't know what the future plans are. He hasn't even spoken about it, but this is the record and this is what can be happening. Now, I was also disappointed that there was no merch available because, it, or if there was a pay option to buy the record, he's releasing it as MP3s. Maybe the paywall for it is the WAV files for the ones that want the super high quality of it. I definitely would have bought the record as soon if, if there was a pay option, I was fully prepared to buy the record. If there was a shirt, if there was something else, all going on here, I would or whatever it was, I would have bought it. I think it's a great idea for it and a very simple, plain way to do it. So just imagine that whole system, but with either a paywall or a email edition list, uh, email sign up. I think it's it's great, and we're gonna see more of this in the future. And Ben Jordan, we had him on the show, and he was talking about how the first time he tried this, he's like, I put it up for free. But he goes, I gave fans the option if they wanted to pay something for it, they got to cho choose whatever the amount was. He's like, I literally made more money on that than anything through streaming before. And so just, you know, again, maybe Pharrell doesn't need to make money. But for you guys watching this on just and even for us, you know, Orko is my music producer. I'm working on my new album and we aren't so much that we want to take our music completely off of music platforms, because for me, I just want to make sure that my stuff's always available. You know what I'm saying? If you want to check it out, you can because it's a marketing thing. It's more so of you can check it out. And then maybe the play for the new album is you get a taste of it. You get to hear any singles that are released as one offs. OK, those will be on music platforms. But then when we do the drop, maybe if you want it the first month, you buy the album, yeah. you buy the digital download or whatever. And then maybe after that, maybe after a month or two, maybe we will put it on streaming platforms. But just remember that you have control over how you roll this out. And if you do the math, it adds up. Yeah. If you have 20 people who buy it at $15 a unit versus if a thousand people streamed it, you are making a huge increase in profits through those actual sales. A music attorney is your number one legal resource for artists, producers, and record labels. Get contract templates, one-on-one -on -one legal advice, free master classes, and everything you need for your music business. Go to tommusicattorney.com. If you're looking at the numbers and all you're looking at the f numbers is financially, I mean, if you sell one record at five dollars, you probably and, and you're a new artist, whatever, you're probably gonna make more on that one five dollars than you would have made on all the streamings that you might have had for your first release in the month. So, think about that. Just think about just the full on potential. Think about hybrids. Think of when you're seeing these things, when you're listening to Ben Jordan, when you're listening to Curtis King, when you're following the Top Music Attorney channel, when you're seeing Pharrell, when you're seeing Kanye, when you're seeing these other artists that are just taking full on control of what they release. And there's no reason why you're not. We don't have to necessarily buy into this machine. What kind of career do you want to have? Are you trying to build something sustainable? And as we're going forward, you're seeing so many artists are doing this. This is inevitable. This is what's happening or at least for a lot of your favorite artists because they're tired of the machine. They're tired of the unnecessary middleman. I know that I am. I'm thinking drop it on IG, drop it on TikTok for your promotion so people can share it everywhere and make reels and you can you know, have your sounds and you're still there and then do it on your website. You want to put it on streaming later, put it on streaming later. Offer it direct, higher quality downloads if they want or free, pay what you want model. I have friends that do Bandcamp and now I can't endorse Bandcamp. I've never used Bandcamp, but it's very interesting to me. And they have a pay what you want. And they said that they've made more money off like they'll get people that just buy the record for $100 just because they want to like right. support the band. And right there, that $100 
that's more than you were going to make off that EP, most likely for a lot of you know newer artists. And then you're just focusing on building your brand. You're focusing on your social media presence and getting the marketing out because that's what you care about. I saw a comment before about how I don't like the idea of direct consumer. You need Spotify. That's the best way for music promotion. And I'm like, Spotify isn't promoting you out. There's so many limited spots on any of those playlists for the hundreds of thousands of artists that are dropping anything. You're not getting pushed out. I'm tired of working for these companies and not getting anything for whatever. I'm devaluing my music. Like Curtis King has always says, he's like, stop devaluing your music by just giving it away. Just give options. Singles can go on streaming for promotion and album always just be making more money. You're not paying thousands and thousands of dollars. Most of us aren't for studio time anymore. It's not like it was in like the nineties or the early two thousands. You can make your whole radio ready record in your living room in your DAW, there's no excuse for you not be making enough music to sell to your audience on a regular, there's no barriers. Yeah, and then outside of just selling the music directly, because we're talking about one little thing here, and I had a consultation with an artist and she's newer and she has a great look, great voice, love the songs that she's released and all that, but just not, you know, not, not having kind of like a guide of what she does next and not having all the contracts and all this stuff. So I'm walking her through all of this stuff and I go, okay, let's go to your website. And it was just kind of like, you know, standard stuff. It links to some of her social media. Some stuff was missing. You got you to make sure everything is like super up to date. People can just easily find you everywhere. But equally, you know, she talked about how she gets hired to do top lines. And she was just mentioning, you know, like as far as how, how should she set her rates. I was talking to her about setting up her own little home studio so she doesn't pay to go somewhere. I'm like, dude, I did that for the longest time and talking her through it. And I just go, what else can you sell? You know how to do so much as a musician. You have to do it for yourself. Like right. for us, we are our own videographers, right. photographers, music producers, songwriters, lawyers. We are literally everything as our own record label. And we had to do that in order to make ourselves successful and to be able to do what we wanted to do. All right. And so so when I was when I was talking to her, I just go, that needs to be on your website. If I wanted to hire you to make me a custom song, if I want you to hire you to do top lines, like talk me through the process, tell me your pricing, tell me how to get in touch with you. Right. So thinking about direct to consumer, the consumer is not just your fan. The consumer is someone who wants to hire you for a wedding. <laughs> the consumer is someone who wants to buy a beat from you. You know what I'm saying? And so getting you to think about that is like really our goal because we want you to monetize your skill set and your actual music. Another thing is when we're talking to these direct consumers, it's people are worried about it's how are people going to listen to it? They have to use different phone apps and all this kind of stuff. That's not true. I'm going to end up making a tutorial video on how you can add your downloaded songs, whether they're on your computer or they're on your phone to your Spotify. You can incorporate MP3s and all that stuff into your Spotify. You hit the little gear icon and it opens up an option in there on your laptop, on your computer and as well as your phone where you can add your libraries into there. You make a folder of your Spotify and album titles, you put them in there and you can incorporate those into other Spotify playlists and you still have seamless listening. So it's like use Spotify as a player and it's gonna take a couple of artists making videos and educating their, their fan base about it and the information about that is gonna go viral because nobody talks about the fact that you can actually add your own files into Spotify. I mean, it's not gonna be distributed, but I'm saying it's, it's on there so you don't have to worry about opening up a new app just because you want to listen to somebody's music. And all it takes is a couple of YouTube shorts or IG reels to go viral explaining this. And then everybody's going to know fans. All they want to do is support artists. I do. I buy so much either merch or music or just whatever from, from my favorite artists all the time. Like that's kind of where my money goes a lot of times. Concert ticket, it's concert experiences. We'll talk about that in the future as a way to to make money. We see all the time meet and greets and the VIP things. There's so many ways to do it. And it's so exciting because again, you have zero barriers as an independent artist. It has never been a better time in the history of music to be an independent artist or just starting out getting your voice heard. A lot of the younger new artists don't know the experience of going out four times a week to all the shows all around town and flyering or handing out, you know, demo songs to people just hoping somebody will listen. Now you could do everything from marketing, better marketing on your, at your house. I don't have to wait and, and, and beg everybody for, for money to, to get, so I can record a couple songs in a studio. Now I have an infrastructure or I know somebody. You could literally write a song and put it up in 24 hours if you wanted to. In my mission, because you guys know I do music business, you know, training for the first round of my music business course. 
course was all about just teaching you about the legal stuff, contracts, music marketing, and stuff like that. And then my mission when I revamped it, and it's not it's not out yet, okay? And I've just been holding off on this because I'm just you know busy with lawsuits and things like that, <laughs> running a law firm. My mission was to focus on the things that you guys care about the most, which is like synchronization licensing, licensing to actually get your music placed into TV, film, and games, but also direct to consumer and how you make money through services, through music, through bundling, and all these ideas that you haven't thought about. And really focusing on all the other stuff as well, because you just gotta know, like music business mastery and all that. I don't know where we're gonna roll it out. If you aren't interested, just make sure you're on our newsletter. It's topmusicattorney.com forward slash newsletter. And that way you just know when updates start coming about it. But if you are interested in like doing this real life, you know, my whole thing is let's get you to six figures. Because for people, in the music business, they're like six figures with it, you know, 10,000 a month. Mm. I couldn't do that. Why can't you do that? And that's what this whole conversation is revolved around. You are thinking too small. If we get you to think bigger, you'll start to get really creative about using your skill set, your music to make mm. real money. Here's a comment right here. I prefer to buy flack files and keep all my music locally. And that's, that's what I'm talking about. That's a great option to have for your super fans that want a higher quality version of it that they'll pay for on your website. It's, it's a great way to option. You know, an, another thing, you know, I, I talk about just other ways you can make money on your website. We also do handwritten lyrics that you can, you know, for our songs that you can charge and, and sell those. That's, that's you're buying paper and you're buying pen, um, you know, and posters are a huge markup and better than t-shirts, better than anything. And those sell yeah. the best for them is, I mean, you're, you're spending a couple of dollars to get them printed at Walmart and then you're charging $25 for a poster and you autograph them. It's all revenue. It's all money. So there's so many options to, to what you can do. I'm so excited for this. The Cheat Code Podcast covers this kind of stuff as well. King Pat the Rep Jungle is a great resource. Cheat Code Podcast, great podcast. Windy Day, we've had her on the show as well. Such a great resource. The community is telling you what's going on. But let me just wrap up one last thing over here that, about the Pharrell record because I don't want to, because I am a super fan and I just want to say that I highly recommend that everybody go check out this record. There's so many just great songs on this. Literally, when I was listening to this record, I had the biggest smile on my face and I was getting a little misty because it sounds so good. Daddy Lying, Come On Donna, Ball, Richard Milley, Who Needs Rest, Going Back to VA. These songs are just wonderfully written songs and the vibe was exactly what I needed. It kind of feels like an NERD record. Like it wouldn't surprise me. I, you know, there was rumors that they were working on the new NERD record a couple of months ago that I saw, but then the Neptune stuff happened. So I don't know what's happening with that, but it feels great. I highly recommend you go listen to this record and, you know, just shout out to Pharrell and, and Craig, congratulations. Uh, I'm curious to see what he does with it and what merch and other things come out. And again, I would have paid for it. Uh, so. <laughs> we would have paid for it.